So we got a call for a Tacoma that has found itself in a bad spot up kind of between Boulder and Torrey. So we're gonna head up there and see if we can get it out. We got Trevor with the weather. Me with the weather? It's like 42 degrees. It's kind of thought winter was over, but it's April and I think we might run into a little bit of snow. We'll see. It could be a good day. Potential. It has potential to it has be a potential. good day. We got Lizzie back there. I got the whole back seat to myself. Looks like I'm gonna sleep good, huh? So there's a pretty good storm moving through the state going from west to east, is that right? There's a chance we're headed into a storm. A 100% chance we're headed into a storm. The storm that I warned you about is here. We drove right into it. Now what's interesting about this job is we're gonna be really close to where we did that really sketchy one, the Chevy that was there over the winter. We're not gonna be very far from that distance wise, but elevation wise, we're gonna be quite a ways away because it's like straight up. But we'll show you that on the map. Tucker wheel will be like, bloop. So we're gonna be picking up the customer here at their house, and then we're gonna drive up to the mountain. There's a trailer park out here. What it kind of looks like. We can't have a trailer park without chickens. <laughs> well, here we are. You want to tell us what happened? Well, I tried to take the truck up through the snow, then tried to back out of the snow, but slid down into one of those little uh, water diversion bumps, and probably could have got pulled out by a single full-size truck, but I went back and made it worse. You'll never guess, but the fuel light just came on. I'm very embarrassed. I think we're gonna be okay. I think we can get to where we need to go, turn around, and fuel up in Boulder. We're not gonna get stuck. It's turning around for once. Trevor, it is 32 degrees. Oh, uh, all right, I was wrong. That's why Lizzie usually does the weather. Steep hill. Well, you did a good job. Yeah, I got her proper stuck. <laughs> Well, what do you think? Trying to decide whether we're gonna do the front end first or the back end first, or try the whole thing at once. All the weights right there. Yeah. The whole weight of that whole vehicle is right there. <laughs> so we can pivot on that fairly easily. I'm thinking we want to pull our energy back right here in this line, straight to that tree. We're gonna want the front wheels turned left, Lizzie, in reverse. And we're just gonna set up a pole here. Put this around that tree right here. Days. All right. Go ahead and get in it. Fire it up. Okay, start it up and roll this window down. strong those are now <laughs> oh I bet you the chain put pressure on it it was where the chain pinched it well we learned something today okay. I like the 
those yellow ropes. Where can I get one of those? Mattsoffroadrecovery.com. All right. Hard left. Yeah. Whoa! What just happened? Did that just slip? Okay, just stay right there for a second. Okay, let off the brake, but don't give it any gas. pivoting on that rock I'm afraid when I pull it it's just gonna happen when that front end just slid down like that my original plan was out the window because now we're back in the same spot I still think we're gonna make it happen all right tiny bit of gas Okay, less gas. Hold the brake now, let me actually put it in park. Just hold the brakes. That's holding the brake. Oh, you're just sliding. Put it in drive, and then let's see what happens. Let off the brake, but trying to be ready to put on. Turn a little more passenger drive this way. Okay, that's fine right there. Go ahead and put it in park. Break this down. So not only can a mass recovery rope be used to yank people out of a stuck situation, they also double as a tree saver. No damage. Okay, now turn the other way and go forward. Nice, Lizzie. You're good. You got all the room you need. All right, all the room, just not all the traction you need, I guess. Man, it doesn't want to move at all. Uh -uh. Is there no diff lock or anything like that? Yeah. Oh, we've got a diff lock. Yeah. Oh. I need that car up here. Okay. Lizzie! Can I back it up? Yeah. Back it up. What am I doing wrong? You need more momentum. Here, I'll trade you. I just want to. Knock my hat off. Ow. I'm not going to say anything. Ow. Hang on. Hang on. You got to recover for a second. My bones are going back into position. <laughs> oh, crap. Oh, yeah. So, Lizzie. 
Lizzie, I want you in reverse first, but I don't want you on the gas. And then when I stop, that's your cue to put it in drive and turn the other direction. Didn't even run over the rope. Good job, Lizzie. Yep, I'm a pro now. Okay, right. just follow us down, I guess. You good? Slide away, baby. Okay, I'm gonna stay out of your way. Yeah, good idea. Those Canadians that tell me the wheel speed doesn't work, take that. In our neck of the woods, wheel speed is the answer. <laughs> Bogging away. So how was your fancy stuff in the more air turning around? I was going uphill and then I just backed up like this and then spun my front end down and around and, and How did you get it. the front end to spin around? Front wheel drive. You're saying I could have done that in my Jetta? Yeah. I have to take my Jetta out here. <laughs> That fancy stuff to which Trevor is referring to is called a front dig. Well, Dan, you made it. And back again. How was the toboggan slope coming down? Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Just trying to avoid his tracks. There you go. Thank you, Lizzie. You're welcome. Have a safe drive, y'all. Thanks. Have a good one. The drama is not over. We still got to make it back for fuel. <laughs> so it's telling me that we have 22 miles till empty. Boulder can't be 22 miles away, can it? Uh, it's mostly downhill. I don't even get a rush out of running low on fuel. It's just a part of my life. <laughs> so I need an intervention. <laughs> oh, two miles, oh no. We're gonna be it's... half mile short. All right, we made it. We did such a good job. Matt bought us ice cream. So a couple things to unpack here. That strap that broke, I should have known that that was gonna be a problem. It was no fault of the strap. It was the way we rigged it with the chain. Complete mistake, but nobody was in the way. It wasn't that big of a deal. We just re-rigged it up with stronger stuff and got back to work. We got the gentleman out of the situation he was in and back on the road. Well, Lizzie didn't die of starvation, even though we didn't eat lunch till three o'clock. We are back on the road. We got about three hours of driving and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Lizzie's starving, so she's going into hibernation mode. Oh, it's called torpor. That's what hummingbirds do every night so they don't die of starvation.